Boxing beats and rhymes. Boxing beats and rhymes. So the WBC policy: when fighters fight for rival belts, they will be omitted from the ratings. So Anthony Joshua was standing as the number one WBC heavyweight contender, of which Alexander Usyk holds the title. Come to find out today, the man that Joshua bludgeoned into defeat in December, the Swede Otto Wallin, has resurfaced at number fifteen in the rankings. He exited after Joshua stopped him in five rounds. And now he's resurfaced at number 15. Now the policy is the policy. You're going to admit Anthony Joshua, he's fighting for the IBF belt. That's the policy. But how does Otto Wallin get in at number 15? He hasn't even had a fight since he's been beaten by Joshua. I've noticed the sanctioning bodies leave the top spots, let's say number one to number five. They often leave them spots vacant if they haven't found a suitable replacement. Why can't they leave number 15 vacant? At least until Otto Wallin beats someone of note. He's got a fight coming up soon. I don't know who against. Deontay Wilder, one win in his last five, is ranked at number 14. Lost his last two fights. Maybe if he loses his next two, he'll get an eliminator or a direct shot at Usyk. Boxing is the swill barrel of sports. It's a dirty racket. Tyson Fury, who was ranked number two, now becomes the mandatory challenger at number one as Joshua exits the rankings. You see, that's political, moving Tyson Fury up to number one. He lost his last fight. What the WBC are doing are accommodating the process of the promoters and the rematch clause. Yeah, let's put him up to number one on the strength of losing. If there was no rematch clause and no scheduled date for the rematch and he lost that fight, would they have made him mandatory after losing? No, he'd have to go back in the queue and then drop him down to, let's say, four or five. That's what would happen. I'm not saying he shouldn't get the rematch. The rematch clause is there. He gets his rematch. That's fair enough. But it's almost like they're using the rankings as a promotional tool. Number one mandatory against the undisputed champion. Just gives the selling of the fight a little more oomph, doesn't it? Fake shit. So basically, in the WBC's latest rankings reshuffle, two fighters have been elevated after losing. And how bad does Deontay Wilder's current record have to look before he's omitted from the ratings? Johnny Fisher, the Romford Bosher, he's ranked number 38 after his first round victory over Alan Babich. Boxing beats and rhymes. Boxing beats and rhymes. Tim Bradley accuses Canelo of having a yellow streak because he's not taking the David Benavidez fight. And he said he's not going to shut up about it. He's going to have his say. I'm not going to get caught up in it. Canelo hides behind his fan base and the pro Canelo friendly media. So I'm not going to get caught up in it and do what he wants. But Paulie said that fight, Eubank versus Canelo sells out Wembley Stadium in the UK. Now Paulie's been out here quite a bit. So he knows the UK. But what has he felt? What feedback has he got to suggest that Canelo could sell out Wembley Stadium against Eubank? I could see a fight with Calzaghe selling out the Millennium in Wells. I could see a fight with Froch 2013-2014 selling out Wembley perhaps, but Eubank. I think people would be shocked to find out outside the UK that Canelo is not the name in the UK that he is in the USA or Mexico. He's not that kind of drawer over here, as far as I know. That's my opinion. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Am I wrong or am I right? I think he potentially could sell out Wembley, but it would depend on the opponent. You know, they're still talking about that Eubank and Ben fight. Is it as big as it was in 2022? We'll see. We'll see. Boxing beats and rhymes. Boxing beats and rhymes. So according to Ben Shalom, the Eubank Canelo fight is in negotiations. That is real. And it looks like the board is in Chris Eubank's court. Now he's already screwed up bags against Golovkin. Is he gonna play himself and price himself out? Because he knows he's being viewed as a pawn for Canelo to get a defense in and look good. So I don't know how much they're offering him, but he's pondering it. Either take what they're offering with Canelo or hold out for this Conor Ben fight. This is why he asked for them two easy fights from Matram. They said they'd give him one easy fight. But Ben Shalom looks like he's prepared to give him two easy fights, which Eubank is going to want a lot of money for. He's obviously trying to buy time if the Canelo option isn't the best option for him. He wants to buy time for when Conor Ben might possibly be ready to return and fight in the UK. 
And this could be a problem for Chris Eubank if he's just basing the remaining fights he has on his career on their financial value. You need to box with ambition. You can't box Canelo because they might throw you a few more dollars here and there. You've got to box Canelo because you believe you can do something here. You can be competitive. You can win, perhaps. If he views it how Team Canelo view it, that he's going to lose, no matter what, then <laughs> that's up to him. I can't foresee a good ending for Chris, though. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. So I'm just catching up with these headlines. Secondsout.com. Anthony Joshua's team questioned drug testing for Daniel Dubois. On Twitter, 258 Management. Evening at Queensbury. Any update on why at Dynamite Dubois isn't signed up for at VADA testing yet? Be the eye emoji. Question marks. This is the last thing you want to be hearing for such a big fight at Wembley Stadium. Queensbury responded, Daniel is enrolled as VADA will confirm. There have been concerns and I haven't followed up the concerns that on June the 1st, Matram versus Queensbury, where Daniel beat Hergovic, that a number of fighters, or maybe all of them, there's no record of VADA acknowledging they passed VADA testing for the contests on the 1st of June. <laughs> so it says here, only hours before the tweet was released, that they was in the process of finalising Dubois' enrolment with the drug testing program. The question 258 and Anthony Joshua are asking, why so late? What possible reason can you have that you've enrolled so late? Joshua said, I don't understand how 60 to 70% of people can get away with doping if you get random drug tests. He said he gets drug tested all year round. Every quarter, he has to submit his whereabouts, where he's going to be every day, at what hour of the day, so the drug testers can turn up randomly if they want. He said it's been like that since 2011, and that's the Olympics when he was an amateur. He submitted to it every day of his life. So why is he under pressure, he asks, but 60-70% of other boxers are not. Once you sign up to a top-tier promoter, they should all have that approach to random testing as part of the deal. Sunsport reached out to Queensbury for comment, and I'm assuming they didn't get no reply. Working on your alibi. Frank's going to tell us that Daniel is getting tested by UCAD, but the standard UCAD testing for whatever you pay it's a landslide behind Vada. I have no doubt, predictably, Frank's going to come out on the offensive, as he has to. He has no choice. He's going to do a whole load of barking. But how do you explain that Daniel isn't signed up all year round to more than UCAD testing that we know is inadequate? Could we see the first cracks of this newfound bromance between Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren? Stay tuned. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. The away fighters showed out last month in South London. Jack Massey from Cheshire, 22-2, and two, 12 inside the distance, outpointed Isaac Chamberlain unanimously. Chamberlain from Brixton, South London lad. And in a considerable upset, a lot of people thought Richard Riakpo would not only beat Chris Billy Smith, who Riakpo has beaten before, but actually stop him. But Billy Smith put on a brilliant performance, didn't he? Chris Billy Smith and Jack Massey have actually fought in the amateurs and Joe Gallagher who trains Massey is hoping that Massey versus Billy Smith could be a potential world title fight on boxer and why not? If it goes back to Bournemouth they do a good crowd, why not? Massey is now European and Commonwealth champion. I like to see him fight Siobhan Clark for all traditional route straps. That'd be a great fight if boxer and Matram could work it out. But obviously I understand Joe Gallagher and Jack Massey, they're going to want to go for the world title. Maybe Isaac Chamberlain versus Richard Riakpo. South London lads on a course of redemption after they both lost at Selhurst Park last month. That could be a decent scrap. In all truth, Billy Smith, he should be looking at the Jayopatias now, shouldn't he? He should be. Zerdo and Noel Mikolayan should be looking at unifying now. He's done the domestic circuit to death. Time to move on. Boxing beats and rhymes. Boxing beats and rhymes. WBC have ordered Shakur Stevenson versus William Zabeda. Zabeda is ranked number one across the board for all sanctioning bodies, all four of them. Oscar wants to go another way. The only way he really 
wants to make that fight is if Shakur signs with Golden Boy. The problem Oscar's left William Zabeda, because he's the fighter and he loses credibility, is his impulsiveness. If he had played his cards close to his chest and not said, we need to sign you to make that fight, then it'd look better in the PR war if Zabeda doesn't take the fight. Not that it really matters. It's petty, really. Now, I was saying that Bob Arum's offer, 3 million a fight, 15 million deal across five fights, it's not a bad offer. But Shakur, 27 years of age now, and he's a three-weight champion. And he could be possibly looking at purses on a higher tax code right now. Now, you can say he doesn't deserve it because of how he fights or whatnot. You don't like his style. That's fair enough. Steve Kim broke it down. A likely purse bid of $5 million. They've got until the 20th of August to organize or negotiate a deal. Now... A purse bid will be likely 70-30 in Stevenson's favour. He nets 3.5 million. That's 500 grand more than what Bob was offering up per fight. It will leave Zabeda with 1.5 to play with in a fight. Golden Boy, if they're honest, which they're not going to be, they're going to be rooting for their guy. They know Shakur will be a huge betting favourite. If William is routed on the scorecards or even stopped... Who knows, Shakur might turn up. They have a huge rebuilding job of William Sabeda and the risk reward might just not be something they want to entertain. If it goes to pay-per-view to try and cover the big purses being paid out, will that fight even crack 150,000 in this current climate in America? What I would like to see is Oscar stop clowning around and sit down with Eddie Hearn and they co-promote this fight. I mean, it's unbelievable the language Oscar's coming out with. He won't be told who to fight. He's such a badass. He's ranked number one with all the sanctioning bodies. A badass that you've tried to steer away from Shakur. More like a protected species. What I can't deal with now is is the fan bases out there. And their hypocrisy. A lot of these Zabeda fans, they tear Tank Davis apart. And even I do. They tear him apart for avoiding fights. And they can't see their hypocrisy. They can't see it. I'm not even going to vent on it too much because it's getting me nowhere. Yeah, head crack, head crack. When the camera starts rolling, you see Derek with his right hand holding the guy's left shoulder. Looking like he's trying to contain him. The guy then gets very aggressive. The head goes in from Derek. The guy is incapacitated, no longer a threat. They say Derek had his children with him. You would hope it's unlikely he would start beef with his kids there. But he does have a history of rage incidents outside the ring. So without seeing the whole of the footage, who knows? The police spoke to Derek. They were satisfied that there was no wrongdoing on his behalf. Frank Warren said Derek's innocent. And more importantly to Frank Warren, Derek's fight with Joe Joyce is still on. It won't be affected. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. On the Usyk Fury undercard, Joe Cordina surrendered his IBF 130-pound title to Anthony Kakache. Hearing Joe talk in this article, you can hear he's clearly a little bitter about the whole thing. Because, like, when I watched it, I was under the same impression as Joe. Not necessarily that he was going to win the fight, but the fight did turn when he was struck on the break by Kakache. A lot of people are saying, well, Kakache was on his game and he was on it. Yeah, he was on his game. And then to add to that, Cordina struggled in his previous two before Kakache against Vasquez and Rakimov. Yeah, he did struggle. I actually thought Vasquez won the fight, but it was tight. The referee did mess up. And Joe, say what you want. That, yeah, he struggled against Rakimov. That he struggled against Vasquez. Joe is tough. And Joe will fight to the last drop. Taking nothing away from Kakache. Brilliant performance. Joe said today that Kakache offered him a rematch. Joe said, I probably can't make 130 no more. It'd have to be at 135. But Joe said, look, I'll stay at 130 for the rematch. So he could right the wrong. And Joe said it was agreed. Then Kakache decided to fight Josh Warrington. I don't know if Joe should stay at 130. But he said that's the only fight he would stay at 130 for. So it looks like 
after he takes his family on holiday, he'll be back at the match with Jim. And later this year, he'll be targeting a ring return. He said he hasn't heard anything from Matram. Eddie cashed him out for the Saudis. Kidding. But, you know, when the referees verbally break the action and they're not close enough to step in between the fighters, they have to watch that. And that's how Joe got hurt. And it was all downhill after that. It was an excellent fight, though. I really enjoyed it. Warrington Kakache. I vented on that already. Warrington is fighting for the super featherweight title despite losing his last two at featherweight. That's crazy. That's just absolutely crazy. Crazy! Always jump when they be catching them cases. Why they promote being wasted? That lifestyle the kids wanna taste. It. They who I'm talking to.